We will have to see. Maybe maybe number guy was upset because he got told that the whole match will be remade. And he had that game one. It's very upsetting. Well, um, we are waiting. We are waiting for the players to get back. Uh, they're getting online. So, um, yeah. So, what the, what is the let's see what is the ruling? Gonna ask the players. Okay, both players are online. Well, uh, yeah, some stuff like that sometimes happens. I mean, we've seen um, in the recent weeks there have been a lot of issues in tournaments, which I either if it's DDoS attacks or like on-site uh, issues with disconnects that also sometimes happen. Even at DreamHack, uh, issues happen uh, happen sometimes, even though it's like the most high pro high quality production. Yeah. Well, there's all these issues in LAN events. There's so many wires, like. <laughs> it's understandable, of course, but these these poor people have a lot of experience. It's just sad to see this happen sometimes. All right, so we got news um, that apparently the whole match will be replayed for everyone that's got disconnect issues, including number guy. Including versus number Grinch. guy versus This is clearly the reason why number guy got so upset. Um, yeah, I mean, even I got disconnected, as you can see, <laughs> as, yeah. you, as you saw on stream. So. Um, yeah, we're gonna bring you once again that matchup, uh, Paladin versus Druid, I guess. Um, so, yeah, we are ready. Let's see if the players are ready. If I can find the more apprentice. Uh, yeah. Even if you're Nims, you shouldn't really be happy about this. Like, okay, you're getting a second chance, but winning like this is... It's yeah. not that it's dirty because it's not up to him, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. That's yeah. It's the admin's decision, and admin has the final word. So, um, yeah, the players are getting ready. They are going, getting into the game. We see the loading screens on stream, and we're jumping right in. Once again, Kadimsh on the bottom with the mage, the number guy on the top with the paladin. And Knims already with a very solid curve. Snow Chugger is a Tinky Town technician. And the one drop two. That is a really strong curve on the play, especially. Yeah, Knims is going to curve really well here. Oh, gets the Mech Warper too. That's really strong. But uh, Number Guy as well. Very strong curve uh, and opening for him with a turn one Zombie Chow, which is always important to have. You Mech Warper is a Snow Chugger here. Oh, there's also the option for Mad Scientist. But it seems that Nims is opting for the hero power first, which makes sense because he can just follow this up with a mech warper and snow chugger on turn three. I don't know if I would have went for that. You could have dropped one of the two threes, either warper or snow chugger, and you'd, you'd either force the chow to trade along with the muster, or the chow to trade in clockwork, and then he would fall short to a two three, and you could keep spamming minions. He just might have been afraid of a of a potential um, master for battle, I guess. Yeah. And I guess he saw a turn three play with a uh, Warper into Snow Chugga. Even so, Muster has impact here if he had it. Yeah, the two threes are so annoying to deal with right now. The, um, the shielded mini bullet, unfortunately, is not able to deal with them by itself, at least not for now. He's going to use the shielded minibot actually. Oh, he got the juggle. He got the mech warper, yeah. So yeah, that was that was a That's good use. That's really of coin. important, yeah. Like yeah. he doesn't really care about the freeze right now because there's no weapons, but the mech warper is really important. Yeah, number guy decided to use the coin to deal one damage to hopefully a minion. The juggle got the 66% chance, and minibot was able to kill it off. Um, yeah, and now I think we sure might see a mad scientist and a ping. But he, he kind of wants to trade into the juggler. At least you want to kill the juggler. Because if you trade into mini body, you're going to have a 2-1 snow chugger. And that's so risky. 
What's really rough for Grimsh at, for Grimsh at the moment is that he got the mirror entity in hand already. We've seen those um, mad scientists, uh, um, mad scientists in um, MacMage pop up more frequently now. But most of those lists run one mirror entity only. I don't know if Grimsh plays one or yeah, two. Yeah, Mac Rattle Mage. I think we saw Taj play that list with two scientists, one trap. Yeah, one and if, secret, if, I mean. if there's only one trap, then the scientist will get no value at all. Exactly. It's a blank two two. It buffs your hundred trigger if you have it, but that's about it. Yeah, and there's no Undertaker anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Druid's a true silver. That's pretty big, actually. He didn't get frozen because Snowcheck was forced to trade the juggler, and the true silver came off the top. So he gets to remain to to keep six damage on board for whatever the, the mage drops. Oh, he does oh. play two mirror entities, but he and drew he <laughs> <laughs> That's so unlucky. Oh my goodness. We've seen this. We've yeah, seen this the, in the, the Savage versus Cypher yeah. match. <laughs> but what are oh the man, odds, man? This is just rough. <laughs> Usually, this Mech Rattle Mage, as you call it, um, does only play one secret, so he can um, safely assume that this Mad Scientist is not going to get another secret out of Grimsh's stack. Yeah, so True Silver into the sites is actually a good play, so there's no value in it. Is he going to use the True Silver though? He could also use the Shielded Mini Bot. We've also seen Savish play the Echo Mage, and he opted to go three traps into on that build. He ran two entities and uh, a counter spell, which is also interesting. But as you can see here, Grimsh is only running two mirror entity, nothing else. So you have to buff the mini in those phase. So right now, number guy pretty much eliminated all the different outcomes of this. Uh, what the secret might be, I guess he pretty much has to be sure that this is a mirror entity now. So yes. There was another possible play though. He could have popped the big game hunter and traded a mini bot into it. He would have kept um, a four two on board, which was actually threatening. That is true, but he might want to. Uh, he might have wanted to play around counter spell, maybe, with a spare part. Yeah, true. He wouldn't then be able to hero power. So I guess he does big game hunter now. But if he does, he doesn't have a way to clear it outright. Yeah, Gdim's hand is just completely dead at yep. the moment. No enabler for the Tinker Town technician in hand. It seems like. With the, if, if, this if the game continues like this, then justice might be served, and <laughs> number guy wins anyway. Yeah, it's looking like that right now. Like right now, he can't pick game in consecration. Not that he would want to, but he might want to hold on to that combo for next turn to be able to proc the entity and consecrate on the same turn. Mm. Yeah. Well, he's gonna have to run something into this mirror entity at some point. The question is, when does he choose to do it? Obviously, he wants to do it before he puts the turret on the board. Uh huh. Move quickly. Looks like he's not going to do it right now. It's also okay to keep the Big Game Hunter because many Mac Mages run the Doctor Boom as well. So. Um, yeah, Doctor Boom is a problem, but uh, you also see double equality in the concentration. Something is tinkering. Would you board clear here? Those are actually two mid-range threats. There's no true silver right now, so what other good options do you have? He could quartermaster, but won't be able to clear anything, and he's giving the major quartermaster in that he case. He could play the equality just to get those two minions to one health. He doesn't need he doesn't necessarily have to play consecration in this scenario. That's also true, yeah. Yeah, he's popping the BGH now to proc the entity. Yeah, but he? Uh, if he does that, then he's not able to equality and consecrate anymore. He can obviously just go for BJH and equality. Yeah, exactly. But uh, then Gnimsh has two minions. I think that's fine, actually, because he's still at 26 say. HP, so... Or he can go for a Shredder, yeah, we didn't think of that. Yeah, I guess he just yeah, yeah. doesn't care about the minions that Gnimsh has right now. We will see if Gnimsh can make some use out of those now. Wow, we actually see the mage has 18 damage potential right now. With a uh, fireball and the whirling blades. 
So 18 damage and a ping would be 19. That's that a lot of damage. Yeah, that would put him at a fireball top deck to win. And I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure Gnim is in a desperate situation like this that he has to go for that. Yeah, Gnim really an well analyzes those, obviously he those plays. To, obviously, he doesn't have to go for a fireball just yet, but uh, he can just go yeah, push for damage it, with yeah. the minions. He can pop the second NC, pop one of the spare parts, ping the face. And Gnimsh is actually known for taking that kind of risk in his gameplay. Yeah, Gnimsh, uh, I, I can remember back to Fight Night as well, <laughs> back in the day where Gnimsh used to play Aggro Mage and always just went for yeah. phase. And Aggro Mage, Aggro Mage, once again, just pretty much being this um, hit pet deck, I would say. Yeah, people say Gnimsh used to be and still is very, very lucky. But at the same time, he actually he gets in himself into a position to get lucky. He gets, he, he makes those plays with a high risk, high reward. That's and right. when he gets it, well, he, he played for that, so he's getting rewarded for a good play as well. Yeah, sometimes he's just in this position where you have to do it. In this case, however, he didn't go for the second fireball top deck. He, he thinks playing more conservative here is, uh, is better. But at the same time, we can see that there's a board clear on the Paladin side. And Gnimsh knows that Paladin has six cards. So he's bound to have either board clear or a Tyrion. And those would be pretty big issues for the for the mage channel. So right here, I think uh number guy just checked for a counter spell first with the first from equality. Oh we popped the L from Mirren's oh, correct. That's actually very smart thinking. Yeah, that was the correct sequencing as well. He needed to check if um, there was a counter spell first mm -hmm. as well. So both players are tied at 18 health, but uh, it seems that the Mage has run out of fuel. That's right, and there's no solution for against the Tyrion. Yeah, well, there's the pink fireball, but then that's six mana, and you do nothing else, pretty and much. You get, and, the, and he gets an Ashbringer. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and that's 15 damage. Yep. Okay, as we all know, Mage doesn't ha run any heal. See the Mech Warper going down. I think I want to pick the Shredder. You got to get the, the Doomslayer off. <laughs> And there's a the boom as well. Yeah, just to be safe, I guess. <laughs> what will we get? Ah, Bobby later. Okay. It's a fine drop. Boom comes out. Yeah, when Mech Mage is in a spot like this, there's no way for him to come back. Yeah. So maybe he actually should have banked on that top deck fire fireball. He could have, but he anyway. wouldn't get it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, right now, Gnim is yeah. just fighting a losing battle. He Play probably knows survive. he can't win, th win this anymore, so he just wants to get out more information about Number Guy's mm -hmm. deck. Maybe get, uh, maybe see some unconventional cards. Yeah, that's another technique you could call it when playing tournaments. If you're playing a, if you're reversing your opponent and the series is not going to be over after that game, you should try to drag it out as much as possible so as to gather more information. Yeah, no reason to concede. Anyway, as you as you said before, justice is going to be done, and the paladin is going to take the first game. But still, the stress that causes on the player is still. Unless number guy gets disconnected again. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another replay, but now. He gets the win, but it's still very psychologically stressful to be in that situation altogether. Yeah. And Knimsh gives Number Guy the win. Yeah, our game one goes to Number Guy, and Knimsh is left with Rogue and Hunter. Yeah. As we were discussing, I think Rogue is the best option right now. But um, who knows what Hunter there is right now, correct? Yeah. Could be a whole new surprise. I've been talking to Knimsh a little bit, and he is not really as confident in his Rogue gameplay as with he is with his other classes. But uh, I think Rogue definitely is a very strong contender in this matchup. Yeah, I find Rogue very hard to play nowadays. It's a very intricate class, and there's a lot of control aspects to it that 